Hello, everybody, and welcome to No Summary, Golden Threads Online Conversations with Artists Who Don't Fit in a Box. My name is Sahar Asaf, she, her, I'm the Executive Artistic Director of Golden Thread Productions. And by way of visual description, I'm a Lebanese Arab woman with a fair complexion and a brown hair. And today I'm wearing a blue top, turtleneck, and my background is a plain white wall. For those of you who don't know, Golden Thread is the first American company devoted to theater from or about the Middle East. And we were founded in 1996 by playwright and director Turan Giagazarian. I would like to take a moment here to acknowledge uh, the people of the land on which we work and live today, um, the multiple Ohlone tribe, uh, tribes. Despite the atrocities of colonization and genocide, native communities persist today uh, and are active in efforts to pre preserve and revive their culture. A golden thread, we are driven by a desire to expand this land acknowledgement statement to recognize our community's experience of occupation in the Middle East, the refugee crisis and displaced population. Whether we are immigrants displaced by political or economic events, for US born for one or more generations, we all appreciate what the human connection to land. And honestly, today it's even more pertinent to state this acknowledgement as we woke up yesterday to a new war raging against Ukraine and the looming of a new refugee crisis in Europe and the world. This today is our first no summary of 2022. And this live stream series of conversations with artists who don't fit in a box will return this year with new episodes that will take us on a journey behind the scenes of making theater at Golden Thread. And today I'm really thrilled to be launching this series with two of the cast members of Drowning in Cairo, a world premiere by Adam Ashafel Sayer, which will open at Golden Thread this April. Hello, Martin. Hello, Wiley. I will begin by um, briefly telling you a little about our actors here, and we'll have all the hour to, to ask them all sorts of questions. But by way of introductions, Martin Zabari Hive is an Iraqi Assyrian American actor, playwright. He has worked with Goodman Theater, Steppenwolf Theater Company, Chicago Shakespeare Theater, Court Theater, Atlantic Theater Company, National Queer Theater, among many others. Martin is a, has appeared on NBC's Chicago Med. He holds a BFA in acting, in acting from the Arts University of Bournemouth, England. Wiley Namans, Naman sorry, Strasser is an Armenian-American performer and native to the San Francisco Bay Area. Most recently, he appeared in the Broadway national tour of A Christmas Carol at the Golden Gate Theater in San Francisco, a Tony Award-winning production originally conceived at the Old Vic in London. He has worked with many of the Bay Area theater companies, including San Francisco Playhouse, Shotgun Players, Aurora Theater Company, Berkeley Rep, Magic Theater, Cutting, Cutting Ball, Crowded Fire, and Golden Thread. Welcome back, Wiley. Um, he has trained internationally with Theater Zar and Teatro Yuyachkani. Uh, you'll correct my pronunciation of that, and received his degree from UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television. I want to also acknowledge that Noor Hamdi, whom we announced as a cast member and who was also supposed to join this conversation today, received last week an exciting opportunity that conflicts with our production dates. It is, of course, unfortunate for us, but we are super excited for Noor. We're always beyond delighted to see MENA artists being recognized for the talents they are. And in a surprising turn of events, we now have Amin Al Gamal playing Moody, and we are just thrilled to have him. Amin worked on the play with us back in 2018 when it was included in New Thread Stage Trading series and directed by Khalid Naga. Amin Al Gamal is a first generation Egyptian American actor, originally from the Bay Area best known for playing Cyclops on Fox Prison Break Revival, which made him the first openly queer Muslim actor to play a leading role on television. 
On stage, he has appeared in productions and workshops at the NYU Public Theater, Cincinnati Playhouse in the Park, Musical Theater West, A Noise Within, and the Pasadena Playhouse. He's a graduate of Stanford and UCS MFA in acting. Unfortunately, Amin could not join us today for the short notice, but we are just very happy to have him amongst our cast. Now, before we dive into our conversations with the two fabulous artists we have in the room, I would like to take a moment to welcome you folks who are joining us here on Zoom, but also those who are tuning into the live stream on HowlRound. Those here with us, please feel free to utilize the chat function to post your comments and questions throughout the conversation. So I will now begin by, uh, first, Wiley, I want to say welcome back to Golden Thread. Can, can you tell us all about, you know, what was your relationship with the company? Tell me about that play. I, you know, I'm new here and I, um, I'd love to hear more about your experience with Golden Thread. Yeah, um, I first worked with Golden Thread really early on, having moved to San Francisco around 2011 or somewhere in there. I did, uh, I did one of the fairy tale um, players shows um, that was all about Rumi. We did like seven, seven tales that were written by Rumi. And um, that was my first project with Gold. I love that. And then I, uh, I had gotten to work with Evren Ochkin um, on a few different productions, mm -hmm. but not at Golden Thread. Um, and then finally, Urge for Going came around, um, and I got to do that show with him. And oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Well, hello to, to um, Evren. Um, and, and also, I want to say that Fairy Tale is, is coming back this year with Nasruddin's Magnificent Journey to Samarkand. It's so lovely to hear that you've been engaged in that show. I want to also uh, ask you both, actually, and maybe we can continue with you, Wiley, about your what brought you to to the theater world what was your first theater experience as an actor perhaps like when did you first perform on stage what do you remember about that why acting is your career basically I think I was drawn to performing and taking on different characters like mm -hmm. even when I was very very young like in preschool I was I was obsessed with the Wizard of Oz and I was in love with Dorothy and also just wanted to be Dorothy and would dress up as her like for years. Um, and also like Raffi, my favorite musical singer or um, it was Fred Astaire that got me like performing on stages, dancing, tap dancing I started with. Um, and then in terms of like theater productions I think my first my first roles were like you know a swallow in the snow queen and um like a demon in the Ramayana that that was my that was my start <laughs> I love that and and how about you Martin first, first where are you you're you want to tell us where are you I know yes. you want to tell our audiences I'm currently in Bartlesville Oklahoma um, my partner and I are journeying west. Uh, we're moving to Los Angeles. So, <clears throat> so this is just one of our stops. All the other stops are kind of just like boring motels, but my partner is an architecture freak. And so we are at this Frank Lloyd Wright building, one of his only skyscrapers. Um, wow. And we're staying at what is now a hotel in this beautiful room. I thought I would be like in my car for this conversation, but I'm here in this beautiful room. I wish on, I could show you. On your way to us, yeah. On, on, on your way, way to you. us, right? Yeah. Yes. We'll begin rehearsals next week. We'll talk about that. But tell us about your beginnings, Martin. Tell us, like, who you are, where, you know, what brought you to theater, why acting, all these things. Um, I moved to the U.S. when I was in fourth grade. I was nine years old. And in sixth grade, two years after that, I, you know, I barely spoke English. I obviously as a nine-year-old was kind of restarting my life and childhood here in the country. And I auditioned for the play um, in sixth grade, which was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And I played a leopard, which is not really a character in this 
play. It was just added. Um, and it not only like started my love for theater and acting and just like this expansive world. I, it was just the first time in this country that I was with people who didn't like judge me or like that I didn't feel judged for not speaking good English. Um, it was just really collaborative experience and I loved it. And I was put in this like leopard halter top and leopard skin tight pants. And I was, it was, it was a big moment for me both for theater, but also just like my queerness. I was like, I'm in a halter top. I love this more than I've <laughs> loved wearing boy clothes. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I started. And it's been downhill from there. <laughs> I love that. That's very encouraging, downhill from there. <laughs> you, you're both um, full-time actors, correct? That's what you do, right? And, and I, by way of introductions, tell us what you, um, what you do when you're not doing acting or theater? Well, when I'm not doing acting recently, I've been writing. When I'm not doing theater, um, I like to sew. My mom taught me how to sew. She used to be a seamstress, like a private seamstress for people when I was younger in Iraq. And I learned how to sew from her when I was young and that's honestly that's what I do a lot and I take care of my plants those are okay. the things I do outside of theater <laughs> what about you Wiley um I also am a big plant guy I uh I worked as a gardener landscaper for a long time and also a florist um but have kind of left those things aside in terms of working for money I I like to do them for myself and for people that I love. Yay, plants. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that, that's great. Um, I love that. Um, I, I'm just realizing that I was so fast to jump on asking you questions and the, you know start the conversation and did not give you a chance to to you know tell us your you know, you're just uh, proper introductions. You're, if you want to share your pronouns or visual description or um, where you're Zooming from, you want to do your land acknowledgement, please feel free to do that. Like interrupt me and do that right away. I can, I can quickly run through those things. I use uh, he, him, or they, them pronouns. Um, I'm currently in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, on my way to Los Angeles, but I have been based in Chicago on the land of the Council of Three Fires. And I have yet to do my land acknowledgement for my new home because I'm not there yet. So I will figure that out soon. Wiley? Um, Wiley, yeah, he or they. Um, I am in Santa Cruz right now. This is Ohlone land. Um, this is where I grew up. And I am right now, I have a gray background. I have a black Henley on. Uh, I have olive skin. I have some some stubble that's moving towards the beard and I'm, I'm bald. Yeah, I, I hope you're looking at the chat, both of you, um, some compliments in there. For, for you guys. Um, okay, I wanna talk a little about the, your acting techniques as actors. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled to be your director and I'm excited to um, explore you know, techniques with you and also learn from you. So Wiley, you, you have in your biography, Teatro Zar, and um, you, you tell me the, the Teatro Yuyashchikani. I'm not familiar with that. Would you tell you us it. what that, I got it, good. Yeah. What is that technique? Um, Teatro Yuyashchikani is a, is a theater company that has existed as an ensemble for, I don't know, many decades now. They're based in Lima um, and they travel around the country and around the world. Um, I saw them most recently at the Red Cat in LA. Um, but I, I linked up with them because I was working on a show at Cutting Ball and the writer of that show, Andrew Saito, had worked with them in Lima and was able to bring someone up to work with us as like a, a workshop prior to our rehearsal process. 
at which point I said, hey, I'd love to see you in Lima. I'm going to be there this summer. And they happened to be doing an intensive. So I, I got to join in um, on that. Yeah, they do a lot of um, political theater and a lot of really bright and imaginative community theater. I'm not giving, I'm not doing them justice, but they do it's, some really exciting, exciting work. Yeah. And what I'm hearing is that it's an ensemble driven creations. It's a device technique. Um, yeah. Yes, which is definitely something I'm very, uh, I'm ever drawn towards. And that's yeah. something that uh, was really exciting to get to work with Teatro Zar as well, mm -hmm. um, which was kind of a similar situation. Um, we were working on a production of Antigone also with Cutting Ball and got to go out there as a cast um, and work with Zar, who are like um, kind of offshoots of Grotowski. Um, mm -hmm. And so, very yeah, physical, very physical very devised, yeah. very ensemble driven. Yeah. That's my favorite way of, of working. And, and and Martin, how about you? Like, wh where do you start as an actor? What's your starting point? What is your technique like? Um, that's a really good question. I, well, I start with reading the play enough times to, <clears throat> To not only understand like what's happening but to be able to read under the lines and to be able to like get into people's you know mind frame um but i i'm most like my process starts where i'm most interested in which is like the world building um and that's like given circumstances that's uh geographical circumstances political circumstances and all of those things kind of slowly feed um feed me in the rehearsal room. Uh, I, this is also a really good question because as I've, as I've gotten older, I've let go of structures and processes. I've let go of like um, actor homework and made that uh, a part of being like present as opposed to doing work on my own in a room. Um, I've tried to like, I've, I've learned slowly more and more how to incorporate all of that homework into the rehearsal room so that um, it's, you know, of course there's always things to do on your own and to think about that aren't useful to bring up or talk about in a rehearsal room. But I think like most of my discoveries come in the room with other people um, as opposed to by myself where I like decide them and write them down and um, yeah. I mean that that's great. I I hear you both, and I as a as an actor and also as a director, I I always think of the rehearsal room as a place for making discoveries, basically. So if you come with a very rigid technique that you're not able to be to adapt and be flexible to the other people that you're working with in the room, it becomes a little problematic. So. I, I love the ensemble creation for the mere fact that it's really give and take. It's a lot of push and pull. It's a lot of, you know, let's do things together and rework. And, you know, the director's job is really to fix the choices that the actors are putting in. So I love that. Yeah, it's, of course, there's some work to be done on your own. But I, I feel like that's, that's always why I say let's trust the process. The process would lead us to, to making these discoveries. So we're going to be together in a rehearsal room starting next week. Yay. Tuesday is our first day. It's crazy. And we are, um, we're working on Drowning in Cairo by Adam Ashraf Sayer. It's a play set in Egypt. And it begins at the catalyst event for the play is the 2001 incident of the police in Egypt raiding the, the boat on the Nile, arresting all 52 men on board and really accusing them of debauchery and, um, and, and, and putting them in prison and torturing them and putting them in prison for up to three years. So Adam, just this is really a brief introduction about the play for folks here who are not familiar with the, with the synopsis of the play. We don't want to give away so much, obviously. Um, but Adam took this incident and kind of fictionalized a world that rotates around three men who happened to be on the boat on that night. It was their first time on the boat. And then how that event really altered their lives forever. So 
I want to ask you um, first, like, what made you interested in the play, in the story? And my next, next question to both of you is, tell us a little about the characters that you're going to be playing. Martin, maybe. <laughs> Um, what made me, what first drew me to the play is their kind of two things that go back to back, their love and care for each other and their, and like what ties them together. And then on the opposite hand, what really tears them apart or what starts to tear them apart. And that being like sociopolitical, economic, um, kind of divides, and just how that, how the world kind of like fits in around that. Um, having like, a, I, I don't know like what I'm allowed to say or not about the play. Um, no spoilers, I guess. <laughs> the spoilers. Not- I, it's just like having, um, I'm really, I, as, a, as a theater artist in general, I'm really drawn to um, economic and class differentiation. And then like the, what happens when there is that, but then you have love and care for each other and like personal stake in one another and how does that play against you? And I mean, like, we're literally seeing that right now in our world (laughs) at the brink of a possible third world world. And so like that kind of, you know, who who wages the war and then who uh, has to actually deal and like carry the war on their backs versus the people who waged it. and that is like that kind of theme is really present in this play. And it's really, you know, it, it's one of the juiciest things to me as an actor to get to work on. Um, and also just my personal, you know, uh, my, from a personal perspective, I was born into a really kind of middle to high class wealthy family. And that uh, dynamic completely changed for my family in coming to the U.S., and so I've, I, it's, it's like I have had two different kind of lives, uh, you know, lifestyles and like being born in this giant, you know, expansive house uh, surrounded by people who don't have that. And then kind of like the exact opposite of like moving somewhere where you're new, where you don't have the resources you had. And, um, and I was young in that first phase. So just like, just to, I often, I'm have to remind myself and check myself about uh, the privileges that I was born into that I no longer have. And it's a, it's a, it's an interesting kind of like back and forth. Yeah. So that's a long answer to what draws me. Thank you for sharing that. No, I think that's, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's interesting how, how our personal lives and journeys really feed into what kind of work we attract. I always find that the work that I attract even with not not always like I'm not always unconscious about that kind of yeah. right yeah. decision or this is a play you know for for different reasons you choose work but then if you do a little bit of digging you find things like what you're just saying like you've been on yeah. both sides of the equation and now with the character you're playing you know it's at the it, he's at the heart of that class and and yeah. economic you know differences in the play mm-hmm. what what was it for you Wiley what attracted you to this play? Well, I remember hearing about this play, I think from Evren, when um, when you were doing the staged reading of it. Um, and at the time I was like, oh, it's a, it's a play about a gay nightclub on the Nile. That sounds like so much fun, um, which it is about that. And it's also about so much more. Um, and then more recently, when it came back up, I don't know, it's so rare that I see a breakdown, like a character breakdown, that I'm like, oh, that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like three gay Middle Easterners. Um, that, that, that was exciting. Um, yeah. But, but the character you're playing, while I think we spoke briefly about that, is not exactly like you, correct? No, it's true. <laughs> of, and, it's, and it's so interesting, like, 
you know, as as this show was cast, can we share that? That like yeah, you're you're playing Khalid, right? right. You want to tell us a little who who Khalid is in the play? But just even before that, like mm-hmm. you know, that we were all cast and we didn't yes. know who would play who. Yeah, and yeah, we can totally share that. Yeah, I, I did. I did say early on. I was like, Khalid is definitely the one that is furthest from me. Um, but I think maybe that's true for all of us, you know? Um, yeah, so Khaled is, I think of the three, the more conservative, closeted, um, and privileged. Um, yeah, what else should I say about him? That, those are, that's what, what comes up initially. I, I find Khaled's like um, career and career path very interesting. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not, yeah. I, his kind of proximity to dictatorship or yes. um, yeah, leadership. And to power. Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting. We, all three of these characters are growing up and then this, catalyst event happens and they all go in very different directions and so yeah I think Khaled goes to what is I don't want to say easy because it's not easy but what is and it's not comfortable either but what's available I mean we're all going to what's available right and I'm kind of talking around things because I don't want to spoil things I know we we, (laughs) that's the problem um I I, I, yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, no, you go ahead. I, I just wanted to say that for me, what's interesting about all these three characters, and, and again, we don't want to give too much today. Sorry for all the teasers, audiences, <laughs> and viewers. But Our really is that... Spoilers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I find all of what really, like there's several things why I chose this play to be my directorial debut at Golden Fred. One of them is obviously how well the characters are written and the complexity of the characters. It's true they all went in so in, in different directions after that incident, but I, I, I felt like I feel reading the play that each one of them is fighting in their own way against the system, even Khaled, who's like, we see him as the most, you know, conforming, he's the most, right, conservative or whatnot, but I, he breaks my heart, really. Khaled breaks my heart in the play because he's not able to really get out of the mold that was was given to him. And I, I love that about the play. It's not, it's not the same, it's not the same struggle. So it really breaks the stereotype of what it means to be gay what it means to be queer especially in the middle east right because it's it can be so many different things um and that's you know the this our season this year is is titled to fight with love and really that came from part a big part of that theme really came out to me from this play and the fact that i see these characters fighting for their life to change the system, but they're fighting with love. And it, it's not only the love for one another, but the love for life. And that is what's so inspiring about this piece to me. Um, and I wanna, well, uh, Martin, you wanted to say something before I jumped on, or no? D- did you I tell was us? Probably what? just echoing okay. what something, what someone was saying. No, I okay. did. Did, did you tell us a little about your character? Do you want to tell us a little about the character? I guess I kind of danced around it. I didn't really. Um, yeah, I mean, Taha falls in this, uh, in that kind of theme that I was talking about. Of um, there is a, there is a different. He lives in a different social class than his two friends, and he's also connected to them in a very personal way, having grown up with them. Um, and so now that he, now that they're all grown up and he has, there's a different power that he has that he didn't as a, as a young person. And I, 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 to me, that's what his journey in this play is, is how he um, finds that power and kind of, and even in his job, um, in his work with the Human Rights Watch, he, he it's really, um, it's just really amazing to see that kind of the shift in 
how that power changes when it's no longer about money and uh, class and it's about information and um, knowledge and yeah and how he kind of moves up that ladder in a way And, and what, what do you imagine to be the most challenging about bringing these characters to life or bringing this play to life? <sighs> to me, reading Moody, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm sure as an actor is going to eat it up, but that character is so challenging to me in my mind. Um, I, I would just be like so, I don't know, like overwhelmed as an actor because it's, he has such a specific arc and a specific role that he plays in this play. And it, it would be so easy to minimize that, to, um, I, I don't know, I don't know what the words are, but it would be so easy to kind of minimize that journey and and it, yeah, I just think the actor playing that is like has a million challenges of how to activate that role to where, you know, to where we follow that journey and don't get like, get stuck in the, in the, the pain of that character um, in a way is the best way that I'm finding the words to say that right now. I love that. I love how you're saying it. I, Moody is the third character that we have. And so it's Khalid Taha and Moody, the three, our three protagonists in this play. And it's Ju Amin Al-Gamal is playing Moody. Um, and I just want to, we're at halftime and I want to remind those who are joining us now or like just mention that this is a no summary conversation with artists who don't fit in a box. It's Golden Threads. Um, you know, bi-monthly conversations this year. And we have with us Martin Zabari and Wiley Naiman Strasser, two of our three actors uh, this spring in Drowning in Cairo. And this conversation is about their acting journeys, uh, theater journeys, and also, um, you know, the play. So, so Wiley, what is, what is the most challenging for you before we step into the rehearsal room? I think before we step in and as we step in and as we go through this, it's, it's very much what, what you were talking about, Martin. And I think that, like, I, I, I agree so wholeheartedly as I was trying on Moody. And, you know, how, do you, how does that character find different colors? Because there is a stuckness. Um, and yeah, how does that not get simplified? And I think that as it relates to all of us and the whole play, like there's a potential for a lot of darkness. And um, I think the ways, the, the myriad of ways that we fight for love um, and, and fight for joy and like, what, you know, where, where do we find humor and lightness and hope in this really, you know, difficult and epic struggle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the thing that this question is making me think of is, is that I think Adam has done a beautiful job really realizing these three people's lives in a very real and painful way yeah. and so now it's like our jobs to make sure that that does not live in darkness because there is so much joy and life to these people and but it centers a very tragic and dramatic event um so i see that as the biggest challenge it's like how do we give this light how do we give this play life so that it doesn't like live in darkness and death and loss because yes. we're all trying to make it work right. we're all doing our yeah. best yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. of course yeah. of course yeah. of course I mean, yeah and, and that's i have to say that's a beautiful question to take to the rehearsal room to remind ourselves that it's definitely this play is is about the story and the tragic event that happened in all of this but it's about much more than that it's about what happens after that whole thing, like how is it gonna change 
our world. And, and I've always been driven to the kind of theater that really lives beyond the curtain call, kind of, so to speak, right? Like, what do, what do we hope? And this is a question for all of us. What do we hope audiences would take away from this play? I hope this play leaves people thinking about their privilege. Um, I, you were talking about that a little bit, Martin, and I think that privilege is, mm -hmm. well, especially for Khaled, but also for all of us, you know, what do we do with our privilege and what are we willing to fight for? I, I feel the same way. And one of your other like warm up questions for us to have was a, a line of dialogue that was yeah. kind of stuck with us. I, I, did, I, I purposely didn't want to go back and read it so I could pick a new one. I wanted to pick the one that comes to mind the most and it's not everyone has the ability to fight. Um, and, and that, I mean, that I think <laughs> like captures the play <laughs> in a nutshell because there are these privileges <laughs> and um, resources that are afforded to some of the characters and not others, and they have to deal with that. What, what is your favorite line, Wiley? I don't know. I, I did go back through the play because I, I haven't digested it. I was going it. to. Like, I, think yeah. will, I, I may give you a different answer in a week or three weeks, sure, or three yeah. weeks from now, but the one that popped out to me uh, recently was Moody says, um, I'm as ready as I'm gonna be. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I think it relates to what you said too, Martin. Like, yeah, not a, yeah, it relates to the, the fight and the, what is it to be ready? And I don't know, we're all fighting in our own ways. Like, you could say that's not the fight, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, talk about a disadvantaged, privileged person. Moody yeah. is like this, like, has kind of virtually every resource at his fingertips in a way and has grown up having that, um, but is a queer person. And so that's all kind of strict. Too. Yeah. Everything's taking away from him. Yeah. I, I love those lines. I, there are so many lines in the play that I love. I love, now I'm the two lines that are coming back to me now, and I did not go back and look, <laughs> but one, one of them stood out to me when I first read the play, and it's the line, um, I think Taha says, or maybe Moody, those who tell don't die. Uh, uh, and then the line that came is coming back to me now is actually a line that, uh, you know, kind of stood out for me in, in one of the virtual readings that we were doing together, part of the casting process. Mm -hmm. And that is one, I think Moody also says to Khaled, like, we're not, in, they were on the boat and they're, he's like, we're not in public. We, it, it, and, you know, I don't want to give away too much, but there was, you know, he was initiating something and he's like, don't be afraid. We're something to the effect of, don't be afraid. We're not in public. We're Every, and it's that feeling of belonging that these people are craving for. And we all do in, in, in many instances of our life. That's one way I identify with these characters, just the, the need to belong, right? The need to be accepted or the need to be for who, they, who we are. And I, I would love audiences you know, to walk away with, with a little bit more compassion to, to the differences, you know. Um, and, and appreciation, obviously, to that. Um, okay, I do have other questions, but I want to also give a chance to our audiences in the room. I, uh, hello, everyone. I read many familiar names. Thanks for joining us today. Please feel free to ask our actors any question. You can type in the chat or you can ask for permission and Wendy, our live stream technician, will give you the opportunity to speak. Um, hello, Homeira. Uh, I Moving on, let's see. Who is there in your mind? Are there people who should not see the show? Right? No. <laughs> Everyone should come. <laughs> Actually, I, I think 
when I'm doing theater, I always think it's the people who don't want to see the show are the people that I want them to see the show. And it's always a struggle to get those folks in the room. Um, yeah. A A Amy Merrill. Hello, Amy. So lovely to have you here. Amy has a question about whether the playwright will be part of the rehearsal process. Yes, we're very happy that Adam is joining us for the first week of rehearsal. So he will be in town next week and we will have him in the room and we will also have our dramaturg Salma Zaldi uh, in the room with that virtually joining uh, for that first week of table work. And thank you um, for, for your comment. We're happy to have you here. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, Yeah, I, I want to ask you also, just, just by way of introducing you a little deeper to our community, like um, what, 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 you know, let, you, we're in the rehearsal room and we have a five minute break, right? What, what would you spend your time doing? What do you usually spend your time doing in between, you know, <laughs> intense sessions? So interesting question. I, I thought about that. Not think or talk about the play. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I mean, that's like my most honest answer. Like <laughs> everything else I need to do as a human being to make sure that I can continue this process, you know, the rehearsal day. Mm -hmm. Yes, the basic self-care things yeah. that are not this play. I mean, a five minute break is like- I know. Nothing. Yeah, a like sip of water, water and a bathroom break. Bathroom, you know? Yeah, if it's sure. a ten-minute break, maybe we'll go outside for a second and get some. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's all. all the, I'm taking hints here. Okay, I'm using this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and our stage manager is also, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> watching. So Karen, keep track. Um, what What is the thing that you do? Before last thing that you do before a curtain goes up. Uh, sorry, I think you might have froze, Saha. What is, oh, I sorry, did. What was the question you asked? The oh, question to was what, what to both of you like. What is it? Um, what do you What do you guys do before the curtain? Like, what is the last thing you do before the play starts? Before the curtain goes up just the opposite of what I just said. Think about <laughs> nothing except the play. <laughs> yeah. Breathe. Is that it? Yeah. Just and try to like declutter my brain of anything else that might mm -hmm. be in it that is not related to the journey of the play. Yeah, it always depends on the show and on the night, I think. Um, but probably some kind of grounding um yeah breathing like yeah inviting all parts of me online yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that leads me to the question how do you take care of yourselves like what do you do how do you step out of character to use a technical phrase how do you what do you do after you know curtain call we go home how do you keep your sanity <laughs> Depends on the show for me. Um, it's unfortunate that it's grouped this way in my brain, but um, mostly when I'm doing Swana centered work, um, I can't eat afterwards. I have like knots in my stomach. I'm like going through kind of like a work withdrawal process after every performance. And if it's not Swana centered work, like Christmas Carol, it's like I turned off a switch. It's like, boop, okay, that's done. I'm out of that, very easy. But like if, you know, if I've just spent the last two and a half hours like reliving traumas from my childhood, it's yeah. gonna take like a couple hours for me to just like, even be able to like drink water, eat, you know, have a, you know, be able to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's definitely different for every show. And I, I don't know, 
even Christmas Carol, sometimes I got to cleanse that, you know, <laughs> like there's, there's a certain uh, amount of like letting go and brushing off mm -hmm. that I can attempt and a certain amount that will just happen in time. I think like you're saying, yeah. and again, it's just like basic self-care things, you know, like yeah. hydrate, rest and, and yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it's like, okay, I'm, I need to be alone. Or sometimes it's like, okay, I need people. Let's connect with something that's not what we just did and ground in that and yeah. let that be the coming back to uh, a new reality. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh, never a drinker except for after a show. Like I never drink, I never think about alcohol, but immediately after a show, I'm like, that's all I need at first, like right away. <laughs> I'm like, I need a drink. Yeah. Yeah, I, I ask this question because I find it extremely important for actors to be aware and to take care of themselves. And I, I want to ask you, like, how would what, you know, what kind of advice would you give your younger self or emerging Swana artists, you know, listening to us today? But before I do that, I want to also give the opportunity to one of our attendees, Homera Gilzai, um, to ask a question, Humaira raised her hand. So maybe Wendy, would you please allow Humaira to speak? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> Hi, Humaira. Um, for those who don't know, Humaira Gilzai is a playwright, cultural consultant, Afghan American um, activist, and a friend of Golden Thread. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so uh, this is a follow up to Martin's quest, uh, answer to the last question. Um, I find a lot of times like when people come and see a Swana work, uh, they really attribute it to that part of the world and they tisk tisk how we do certain things, how we treat LGBT, blah, 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 LGBTQ and such. But there, as we all know, I mean, there's a lot of, um, oppression towards the LGBTQ community in our own country, the United States and around the world. So how will, uh, make this a question for Sahar, how will we educate people that this is not just an Egypt issue or a Muslim issue or a Middle East issue. This is an issue that is happening around the world in various degrees. A good question. That's a very good question, Humaira. I my answer to that is really when I'm working on on a show, when I'm in a rehearsal room, my heart and soul is in that play and is in really trying to make a personal connection to the world of the play. It is true, it's an Egyptian story. It is true, it's very specific in a place and a time. But I feel the theater that is really very specific is theater that is universal, that can fly. It's the story that would be able to connect. If we go very general, it for me, it doesn't speak to me. Uh, you know, I, and I want to give an example. I, once in Lebanon, I did, I did um, a translation adaptation of the play by Tracy Letts, August Osage County, which is very specific, right? Midwest, Oklahoma. And when folks first heard that I'm doing this adaptation, they were like, why is that relevant in Lebanon? Like, this is an Oklahoma, you know, Midwest story that has nothing to do with, with people here. And the way I read the play is that it's a play about a dysfunctional family. And it can be my family, it can be any family, really. And in our adaptation, that's what we wanted to make the play about. And it worked. And people did not even, like people who didn't know that this is a Tracy Letts, right? Obviously his name was there and everything, but not everyone is, is familiar with the theater world. They didn't even realize that this is, uh, you know, a, an, like a contemporary, you know, text from, from international theater. So I, I think the answer is, you know, is in our approach to how we tackle these plays, how we want to present them. Uh, again, like this is, a, it, it is a story about Egypt, but it's, it's I, I, as a woman who has lived and is living in a patriarchal world, I do suffer from similar kind of oppression, right? I do suffer, so I do feel myself fighting for basic rights, you know, 
and that's that's my 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 relation like to to the characters in the play to Moody or to to Khaled who's trying to hide and, and conform or to Taha who's in a way like we we might question his ethical right behavior in the play at a certain point without giving away too much but again like everyone is doing their best and it's it's the human the shared humanity that we want to focus on we're we're going to be doing lots i hope lots of talk back sessions so that audiences will get a chance to ask questions my approach in the directing and coaching the actors is to make this relevant to us as human beings citizens of this world so that hopefully that would be reflected to our audiences that would be my my answer and we do our best as always we have many questions i'm sorry i'm just noticing that we have questions also in in the chat do you have dream projects that you're hoping to bring into life in the next few years i i think this is a question for all um who are your favorite theatrical partners that you love working with over and over again um so these are martin or wiley feel free to um to tackle these questions so the first question is from an anonymous attendee do you have dream projects that you're hoping to bring into life in the next week. what are you working on next i want to say um what do you have planned martin and wiley yeah. do you want to do you, can you share do you want to share yeah I, yeah i don't mind well my biggest project is moving right now so i'm going to move um and see how that goes i'm also um I'm also a playwright and I, I, I wrote my first play about a year ago. So I'm in the very early works of trying to learn how to develop a play and uh, figure that out and try to like workshop it and, you know, um, find a good home for it. So um, yeah, that's gonna be taking up a lot of my, you know, next couple of years probably. How about you, Wiley? I mean, this is, the big one in my future. Um, I'll have another, uh, a few other little projects, um, a remount and a workshop and a drag show during our rehearsal process. But um, up next, I think I'm gonna um, go plant a cherry tree. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and, and we have a, a question from Heather. Heather is a, the program manager of FTP at um, Golden Thread, um, and Heather is asking you guys, are there any resonances that occur for you when thinking about performing this play in the city of San Francisco, its particular histories, the city's current challenges and changes, for example, in relation to gay queer histories, gentrification, etc. And this is definitely relevant to the question that Homero is asking. So if you want to take a stab at it. That's so much. And I don't see where that, I don't know why I'm not seeing Wiley, that. Wiley, I have this too. If you go down right next to I, the raise hand thing, there's a Q&A. Oh, great, thanks. I also Let's... was like, where are these mystery questions? That's how to read it. And I'm gonna put it in the chat for everyone to read. <laughs> That's so much, because <laughs> you couldn't see it. Sorry, it's a, yeah, mystery. No, it's all good. Mystery page. I personally don't, know a lot about San Francisco and I this is my first project out west so I'm I'm really excited to learn all these things that um Heather you're asking so I don't personally have any answers to I guess short answer I would just say yes I mean there's such a there's such a deep-rooted queer history in San Francisco um and yes you know, um, we just had one of the like stronghold queer bars um, shut down a uh, year and a half ago. And so, yeah, there's been a lot of change. I mean, I've been in San Francisco for most of the last decade um, and there's been a lot of change in that time. And there has been a lot of change in the last two years. And so I think we're coming out of a moment that we don't, we don't know what it's, what, yeah, what it's gonna look like on the other side. And this is a really interesting um, 
moment. Yeah. I don't know if that kind of answers your question, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Heather, for the questions. Definitely uh, an yeah. interesting moment that we live in. Um, There's so much. Worldwide. In There's, yeah. And, and we're unfortunately coming to the end of our time. And I want to make sure that we hear your thoughts about, or like if we have Tswana actors watching this, emerging actors, I want them to hear you give them a tip about how if there's one thing that they should be doing, like what would you tell your younger self as a Swana queer performers? So hard to synthesize it into a couple words because I have like paragraphs I'm on sure. paragraphs. I'm sure. Um, I guess one thing I would I, I would tell my younger self if I could is that um, a loss of opportunity for you is a gain of opportunity for someone doing the same thing you're trying to do. So like trust, and like you said, Sahad, like trust in the process. And that's not just the rehearsal room. That's like the whole industry. Like that, you know, things that are, that you are meant to do will happen and, you know, the things that you are not make way for other beautiful things. Um, yeah, that's one thing. I, I would just say, I guess, if you, if you have the fire, if you want to, if you're like curious, just do it. Like, don't wait. Um, I think it's really easy to get scared and caught up in like, this binary of success and failure and it's like it's all a myth just just get out sure. there and do the sure. work and like the people that you look up to most very well are you know making coffee in the morning and like you know whatever you know like they're yeah just yeah. do it i love that <laughs> trying to get out there and do it go trying to let go of like scarcity mentality yes um like there is one role and i you know and there is five of us and one of us will get it and it you know i i think when i when i kind of let go of competition and seeing people who should who i should have been seeing as family i was seeing them as competition um when i started to let that go is when i started to be able to do the things that i wanted to do in the industry and and feel proud of those things. I love that. Thank you both for sharing. And um, I can't wait to begin the process with both of you next week. And unfortunately, we're almost at time. And I know that Martha needs to check out in two I minutes. <laughs> uh, so I want to take a moment to say thank you, both Martin and Wiley, and also sending my love to Amin, who's going to join us as Moody in the play. And I would also love to thank HowlRound for hosting the program. As a reminder, all of our No Summary episodes live on Golden Thread's website and HowlRounds. And I want to thank Wendy Reyes, our live stream technician, and the rest of Golden Thread's really small but mighty team, Michelle, Nadine, Sheila, Linda, and Heather. And big thank you to all of you audiences and listeners in the room without whom really nothing would make any sense. Um, coming up next, before I close, I must say, coming up next at Golden Thread is What Do the Women Say? It's our celebration of MENA women artists on the occasion of the International Women's Day, which usually happens on March 8. And this year we have a wonderful lineup of artists that we're celebrating in a hybrid format. So if you're not ready really to come back to an in-person gathering, you will be um, you will have the opportunity to watch the event live streamed. Um, so visit our website. Humeira Gilzai is going to be with us as a co-moderator and facilitator for the event. I'm so thrilled to be uh, sharing stage with you, Humeira. Um, thank you. And goodbye for now, I guess. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. See you soon. See you soon.